we'll be using today um, the Akua um, Intaglio ink. This is a very thick, heavy, oil-based ink made with soy, um, so it's non-toxic. And I'm using a blending medium because if the ink is too thick, I'd like to go ahead and thin that up with this um, blending medium. Here on my plate, I have um, mixed up some of the ink with my um, blending medium. Um, the process is, is I use this tool here to apply to my plate, and I use my palette knife to mix my ink up pretty well. To get my um, plate ready, and the process is to take a drawing, any drawing that you might have, um, on tracing paper. And what I do is I go ahead and flip it over, put my piece of mylar, which is what I'm using. It seems to work the best with my mini press. So this is the material I like to use, piece, um, and not really a plexi plate all the time. So what I want to do is um, I put my plate on top of my drawing, and then I take a X-Acto knife, and I just scrape out um, the areas that I want to outline or do dry point. Um, it's best to go ahead and tape everything down so that you can get an exact line where needed. Um, a lot of these lines here that you see, I'll take this out so you can see it, these little scratched lines here in this area here were done afterwards because when I did a lot of proofs, I realized that I didn't have much action in here. I didn't have much texture. And this is my way of getting more texture in. So let's go ahead and ink this plate up and see what it looks like with this process. So here's my plate. I have it all inked up. And what's going to happen now is um, I've used this rubber Mod Podge thing, which it actually works really well to press the ink into the etched lines that are on the mylar. And so what I want to do is really push that ink right into the um, etched lines. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and start wiping my plate. And this is a really tricky process, and it takes a while to figure this one out. Um, if you pull too much ink off, you're not going to have very dark lines. So let me go ahead and do that process, and I'll show you. So I usually a, um, a wiping cloth that's recommended. Um, it's kind of like cheesecloth, and it's pretty well worn. And I use this to wipe around the edges to begin with to get most of that off because that's where I want to put other objects, other textures in there. I leave a lot of ink on the actual etched part, um, area of the rose because that's where I'm going to carefully wipe using a fine cotton rag. So this is like um, from a sheet or a pillowcase. And I find that this fine cotton works really well for the fine areas to lift the ink up. So the next step, I've lightened areas here with my, my fine cotton cloth where I know I want to put color in later on. So these highlighted areas, I really wipe out pretty well, trying to avoid my etched, my etched lines right here, if you can see that. Um, over here on this Part, I want to make that a little bit lighter. I want to be careful not to show any wiping marks because those will print and you will see those wiping marks. And if you don't want them there, be uh, mindful of that. My next process now with this, I've got it almost to the point where I need to go in now into these really dark areas and carefully lift out some of the ink. And this is the part where it gets really tricky. Um, you don't want to take away too much, but you want to leave enough. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my Q-tip, which is my go-to for the really fine areas. So now you can see the areas that have been really brought out um, by using the Q-tip. Um, I've gone in here and into the very dark areas and pulled out some more ink, just lightly moving this Q-tip about. Um, this is a, a real meticulous process and it's going to take, 
you know, some time to, to, uh, do a couple of tests on this because, um, it is tricky and I'm not going to lie to you that this is easy to do. Um, the outside areas, you can see where there's markings and scratches. I forgot to mention that I also use sandpaper around the edges so that I can get some sort of other texture, some sort of other uh, middle ground, so to speak. Um, and I do want to be mindful of any, um, I'm making marks, but yet I don't want to see the white marks. I don't, I don't want, it, want it to be uh, look like it, the ink was wiped from that point. So I want to keep it looking like, you know, they're random scratches and not just wiped um, with the ink. Um, I'm going to go ahead now. It looks like I've got most of this um, inked up and ready. My outside area, I'll show you what I do. And this is an, more of an additive process where I'm going to add ink back onto the plate from what I wiped. Um, so it's kind of a back and forth thing. So let me go ahead and get some objects that I'm going to go ahead and press on here to make different textures in the background. So the textured background, I use a piece of foam and I dipped it into my um, ink. And then what I did is I made it, just kind of spread it around um, in different directions here to make a flowing kind of background here. And then after I did a little bit of that, then I took a um, piece of saran wrap, dipped that into the ink, and then just go ahead and make some taps with it. I did have to pull some off because I don't want too much black in there. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and get ready to pull this print. Uh, my color comes on afterwards, and I'll show you that process. And so I've added a few more things to my plate before I printed it. These marks here, I just mixed up some grayish pink color. And I took the back of a spoon and spread some ink here and through here. And we know that we leave little spots like that and it's going to smash right out. Um, we know that these are going to smash and uh, show some action, hopefully, um, in that area. So let's go ahead and get this plate, um, I'm going to untape it and get it ready to print on the little press that I have. So now my plate is on my little mini press here. You can see it's a pretty small press. The bed is only 9 by 12, um, so it's a mini thing. So I've got my plate down here ready to go. I have my Arnheim paper um, soaked and it's damp. And so this is ready to lay on top of the plate. Um, I do have a little bit of a layout here where I can actually adjust my plate and get it to line up with the paper. And so here we are, get ready to see the final print. We're going to go ahead and lift up our blanket and our newsprint covering. Pull that back. And we'll take a look and see. And we have some something anyway. Um, this is our print. You can see that the areas where we wiped away are nice and bright. You can see some of the areas that I smeared in there, they don't show up that well, do they? Because of all the, um, the black scratches, but they're there minimally. But I can also bring those out um, with either oil pastel or a different technique that I'm going to show you in a minute. But anyway, this is the dry point, mostly the dry point um, mono print that uh, we do. And next part, I'm going to show you how the color is added in. So the color process, as it goes, I'm using a very pale, pale pink, which is a crimson ink with white um, just mixed together. And I've rolled it out on this scrap piece of newsprint. And the process to color this is I just turn this over and I rub with my finger just a little bit of ink in the white areas where I want it. This can be a little tricky, but um, it does work. Um, the other alternative to this process, if you find it too meticulous, is um, you can use oil pastels, um, which I find um, blend really well. So now I've gone ahead and I put some pink very pale pink, which is what I wanted for this particular rose. 
And I decided to heighten up my background a little bit. And I just put a brush up to uh, some crimson into the pink on the newsprint. And then I just went ahead and rubbed it to highlight those areas in the background. Just a few. And so that's the dry point process. Um, this is the dry point mono print. And it's a mono print because this rose will always be um, in any other print that's done except for the background will be different. So each print will be different. A monotype, as you know, or may not know, is that the plate has not been altered permanently. So whatever is put on that plate is easily wiped off. I hope you enjoyed this session of dry point monoprint printmaking. And go to my studio, my uh, website, DonnaCarmel.com, and you will be able to see uh, the workshops that we have set up and also, um, we do have some community um, workshops coming up as well, hopefully in the next uh, month or so. And once again, Donna Carmel. Check out DonnaCarmel.com, and I hope you had a good time. Thank you very much for watching.